What's up guys? Welcome back to the OTG YouTube channel. As usual, we're going to be talking about equipment because that's what you guys want to hear about. Um, I was going to do this video shirtless just to prove you should go to the gym, but I really didn't look good in this lighting. So uh, I'm just going to cover up with a nice patterned shirt. And we're going to talk about all of the shit that you see on this table to give you some context and some clarity for this video. This is not just about straight up concealed carry. This is about if something's escalated or you have some sort of job or parameter that's going to make you want to have other things. Maybe there's a lot of civil unrest going on and for whatever reason you have to travel from point A to point B, but you don't want to make yourself into a target. Maybe you work personal protection details or there's something else going on that makes you feel that you need some level of armor, some level of backup or you know, big gun in the car some sort of um, medical equipment or like an emergency rig or an active shooter type of throw on kit, things like that. So we're gonna talk a little bit about scalability, but we'll also have a longer video just about scaling equipment later on. Today we're gonna to focus on the low vis trend. I hate the phrase gray man. Um, it makes me wanna throw up in my mouth. I don't think there's such a thing. Uh, you can walk around in a populated city in cry pants and most people aren't even gonna notice it because they're so focused on what they're doing on their phone, whatever else is going on. So we have to talk about who are we trying to remain low visibility from? Who are we hiding from or concealing from? The average person is not looking at you and they don't care unless you're wearing something that attracts attention. If I throw a plate carrier on to go to the mall, everyone's gonna think I'm the shooter, so that's silly. But if I'm just concealed carrying and I have the capability to defend myself, maybe I have a tourniquet or whatever else, I have that first layer and the average person's not going to notice that. Now, if there's somebody with training or that knows what they're doing, looking for me or looking for people that have what I have, then I start to have to worry about other layers and levels. So well, first thing we'll talk about is just straight up concealed carry, talking about um, things like a fanny pack for medical or where you can put a tourniquet, how you can store an extra mag and stuff like that. Again, for the context of the video, this is about my preferences because I'm the one talking about what I like to do. This is not meant to fit into specifically your case or your preferences. You may be the guy that loves appendix carry and you'll hate everything about this video because I don't appendix carry and that's okay. The reason that I don't appendix carry is it's very uncomfortable uh, for me. I'm not a huge fan of being uncomfortable at all times. And there are guys that are like, just get used to it. You know, it's time for your dick flattening. And I'm like, eh, I'm okay. I would rather just be comfortable and have my draw be consistent. Again, that sounds like flood lore to some people because they've advanced to carrying 42 pounds on the front of their body and wearing a 3XL shirt, even though they look like the tripod that that camera's mounted on. So it's not a debate or an argument on what's better. This is literally just what I like. And so I'm going to talk about that. The first line of defense, I guess, for yourself, if we want to call it that, is your physical fitness. Can you take a punch? Can you give one? Do you know how to roll? Again, we're not getting into the weeds on like physical capabilities of the gray man and all that other bullshit. There's also the mental fortitude side of this stuff. Do you have the uh, capability to predict a bad situation? Are you actually looking around and observing your surroundings? That can still carry don't mean much if when it all pops off, you're doing this and looking at your phone. So there's a whole side to this stuff, uh, you know, in the gray man philosophy that is about situational awareness. Often, if you can predict the fight happening or you can observe it prior to it happening, you can get away from it, which is ultimately the best solution for what we're talking about. This isn't about creating contact. It's about getting away from it unless we're in that situation where in order to defend ourselves or others, we have to escalate, which is a thing, and we'll talk about it later on in the video. We'll also talk about, like I said, medical. If you're, if you're the old phrase of, you know, you're gonna make holes, you gotta better plug holes or whatever. That's actually, I think, a lot harder to conceal than a gun, because we have so much tech and gizmos and there's so many techniques to put a gun in your pants and not be seen, but it's actually kind of hard to carry everything you need for the first line trauma intervention stuff, other than just like, I opened one cat tourniquet and I put it down my pants leg and I walked around, you know, with it pulling the hair out of my leg all day at the mall. So there's different things we can do. Um, I'll just kind of give you the rundown on what I like. This is my experience being informed by concealed carrying for the last 10 years. Um, 
doing low vis operations in law enforcement, personal protection in law enforcement, um, generally carrying everywhere I go. So without further ado, let's talk about the first line of holsters and pistols. There is a current trend right now of talking about micro or compact guns versus full size. Now, if we talk about a micro, um, this is a 43, which is a nine millimeter Glock. As you can see, it's, it's empty. Uh, always treat guns as if they're loaded, all that safety stuff, whatever. This is really tiny and I have big gorilla hands. So for me, I'm not a huge fan of shooting it, but because I do carry it, I have to remain proficient with it and I conduct my dry fire with this and other things. Um, I like to use the pinky extender magazines that come from uh, Glock, and um, this actually is an aftermarket. Um, I forget the company that makes them, but they're really good. So this actually fits my hand and I can get a full purchase with the pinky. Pros and cons to all that stuff, that means it's gonna print a little bit more. Um, the factory mags that come with it are right here, so I'm, I'm, I'm missing these two fingers are almost not even on the gun at that point. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, it is what it is. Part of why I like the extended magazines is because typically I'm, I'm wearing a baggier shirt. I actually have a chest and a back, which makes my shirt hang off the side of me instead of being like married to my love handles. So it's not that hard to carry even a full size. So what's the situation where I'm carrying something more compact? It's typically if I have to wear something a little more form fitting, if it's really hot outside and I'm not wanting to wear like a flannel or something like that. So actually what I'm wearing right now is something that I would wear in warm weather. So we're in Louisiana, it can get to 110, 115, high humidity. I like dark patterned shirts because they don't print a lot. If I sweat, it's not just egregious. Like if you wear a light gray shirt and you have a massive sweat stain running down your side, it's just gross. But I don't like, you know, t-shirts and tank tops and stringers. I don't like to wear shorts out in public. I don't wear flip-flops, also known as victim shoes. I like to wear things I can move and do stuff in without looking um, obvious, right? So again, you, you want to stick out. I'm not going to wear like, you know, combat boots with my cries bloused into them at the mall uh, in my flannel. But it is what it is. If you choose to do that, people probably wouldn't notice you unless you're that guy who carries your Scar 17 broken down in a massive Oakley backpack, you know, just in case you can pop it out and assemble it and then everyone will think you're the active shooter because that's retarded. So I don't like appendix, like I said. Um, I've had this alien gear for like 11 years or 10 years. Um, and it's not ever failed me, it's super comfortable. And obviously this is an inside the waistband holster. I like to carry, and of course I'm left-handed, um, on my hip. So a little bit forward of the hip, just like I carry my holster right here. So all I have to do is defeat the garment and draw. Uh, I don't find it to be that much slower than appendix, but it is infinitely more comfortable. So if I'm spending a lot of time in public or I'm driving, which is, I was on the road for like 200 days last year, I don't want to have to sit there with a pound and a half of steel pushing on my junk in the car when I could put it on my side, be more comfortable. That's a choice that I'm making based on my preferences. So I don't have a problem with these type of holsters. I know that this is a little bit of a dated design, uh, but... Alien Gear, you know, T-Rex Arms makes a ton of stuff. Um, there's so many companies. TXC makes really good stuff. Um, kind of is what it is. Find your preference. You may have to buy a few things and try them out. This isn't the video where I tell you what to buy. I'm just talking about my preferences given their context. So that's the micro. Maybe something I'll wear in, you know, hotter weather if I don't have as baggy of a, a button-up shirt or as skinny of jeans or whatever else. What about the magazine? Well, for something like this, I'll just drop it in my pocket. And you might say, like, well, what about pocket lint? If you do your pre-combat inspection or your pre-combat check, your PCCs, PCIs, which you should be doing every day that you go out, you're going to check your magazine and say, okay, there's no freaking fuzz in it. Um, you should also, if for your concealed carry mags, every couple months, take all the rounds out, inspect it, air dust it, get all the stuff out if you're doing the pocket carry. Now, if you want to do something a little bit more advanced, and I'll go ahead and show it now, even though I'm going to end up using it on all my full-size magazines. Um, this is from Gray Fighter. Joe, he's a great guy. I got this from him at a conference like three years ago. He does have a newer version that's Tegris instead of 3D printed, but it's the exact same thing. Um, this is basically a bunch of elastic bands. And 
uh, elastic bands, uh, Velcro one wrap bands. What they do is they allow you to carry almost any size magazine, even up to an AR mag on the newer models uh, in your pocket. So what I'll do is I will drop the magazine in, clip facing out, and then you can just put it in your pocket like so. And it's not super obvious what it is, uh, but if you're somebody who knows what to look for, you're like, oh look, a Glock magazine. So again, who are we trying to hide stuff from? It is what it is. With a longer shirt that covers the top of the mag, it might just like, look like something else, you know. But what's cool about this is I can scale it down and I can actually put this 43 mag in it and of course it would be dialed in and that's essentially what it looks like. And I can just drop that in my pocket and it keeps it from sitting in whatever pocket lint that's built up or, you know, fuzz or strings or whatever else. You know, belly button hair, which I have a lot of. So, that's the micro. Now, you might be thinking, well, what if you're in a, a dark place? The majority of shootings happen for self-defense at night in the dark. Um, what do you carry at that point to be able to do positive identification or PID? There's this thing called flashlight. And there's some old folks on the internet that don't think you need those. Um, just ignore them. This is uh, cloud defense. I want to say this one's like 1,200 lumens. It's like 60,000 candela. I'm really not the flashlight nerd. MCH 2.0. I'm just now discovering that's the name of it at this very moment. Uh, I bought it because it was recommended to me by a follower when I posted about like, what lights do y'all use? Uh, I've beat the shit out of it. I've dropped it many times. Um, it conceals easily. It's got a pocket clip on it already. It's a flashlight. It's not a big deal. And I can stack that with whatever I'm using for my uh, carry that day. And it's nothing crazy, especially with a shirt over it. You know, you might know you might know what you're looking at, and that's cool. Um, if it's the average person, they're not like, "What's that in his pocket?" Oh, that's a Glock mag and a flashlight. Is what it is. So if you don't have a weapon light, you definitely absolutely have to have some kind of handheld. Even if you do have a weapon light, sometimes you're going to want to illuminate things without pointing a gun at it. So maybe it's kind of always a good idea to have a handheld light. And if you're a cop watching this, you know the old stories about when uh, the old dudes, the old heads would forget their three-foot mag light. And if they had a weapon-mounted light, they'd be shining their weapon light down at the ticket book. That's another reason if you're a professional end user of this kind of stuff to always have a handheld light, not only for searching, but for tasks. You don't want to use your weapon light for anything other than I'm using my weapon. It's not for utility. It's for illuminating stuff when the weapon comes out. So it's always a good idea to have it not only for utility, but as backup, PID when you don't want to point a gun at something, et cetera, et cetera. Just always a good idea to have a flashlight on you. What's, uh, what does uh, Pat McNamara say? Basic dude stuff, right? Just have a freaking flashlight. Don't be a tool. So the next level of this would be um, what if I want to carry a full size? Let's talk about the pros and cons of that. What does a full size give me? Well, if you get big gorilla hands like me, obviously a... Uh, a better purchase on the gun, it's more comfortable, maybe I'm better at shooting it simply because it's easier to shoot. There's a whole debate on that, like you should be just as good with the compact as you should with the full size. Don't disagree, but that's also why you don't see anybody competing with compacts because it's just easier to be good with these things. So a couple things that I do conceal carry, even in the summertime in Louisiana, I will conceal carry full size. This is kind of the main one. Uh, United Firearms did this as a custom job. They had us on a contract class out in New Hampshire two and a half, three years ago. And um, I really liked the like army man green color that one of the guys that worked at the shop had on his gun. So they did a custom uh, Cerakote. I dropped an agency barrel in it because it looks like Master Chief, right? This is, this is finish the fight right here. Um, and then I have an SRO on it. Again, there's like old bald guys on the internet that'll be like, yes, our not duty rated or whatever. Uh, I don't use the optic for breaching. I'm not intentionally smashing it on stuff. And I have dropped it. It is beat to hell. Um, and there's no problems with it. It gets dirty. So I take my finger and I wipe out the stuff that's in it. It's crazy. Um, that being said, closed emitters do have a lot of advantages. So you can conceal carry open or closed. Just maintain your freaking equipment and it is what it is. Um, I'm a huge fan of Surefire lights. I don't like the ones that have the, um, the A, the alpha attachment. I like the threads on them, but for some guns, the alpha attachment actually works pretty well. I think 
yeah, that's the 300 UA, 300 UB. So for the full size Glock, um, I'm putting it in a iron side holster from T-Rex. <clears throat> One thing that I found about their holsters, they don't technically make a holster for a staccato, but I'll show you in a second. I bought it for this gun because this is what I mostly carry. It's got a really nice positive retention and what it's really retaining around is the flashlight. And I was looking at how this portion of it is honestly not super detailed to Glock features. It doesn't come up high enough to impede an optic. It doesn't interface with the, um, the Cagworks extended uh, slide stops or anything like that. So I was like, huh, maybe I can put my staccato in it. I like the staccato because the magazines carry like six more rounds. Um, probably the smoothest, easiest shooting gun I've ever used. And um, like they say in the movie Snatch, wait the sign of reliability, right? That's like a two pound gun. It just feels good. I got the big iron on my hip. So Marty Robin style, I threw this in the same holster and uh, I call it a little puff of dust came off of it. Uh, same retention. Now, if you're a lefty like me and you're using a 2011 style that doesn't have an ambidextrous uh, release, you may have to trim a little bit off of the uh, holster right here. So I took a good old fashioned pocket knife, just whittled it away and then sanded it down so that the holster is not bumping my mag release. But otherwise, didn't have to modify it. And as a right-handed shooter, you wouldn't even have that problem. So anyway, all that to say, you can carry full size stuff outside the waistband on your hip if you just have the right shirt. Um, I'm using the Stendos. So, you know, you've got your 20, whatever three round mag or whatever it is that they hold 20 round mag and you're you're able to carry this under your shirt some caveats to it it's not laying nearly as close to your body it's not like it's a leather formed holster that fits on the right plane um so i'll show you what i'm talking about this is empty and you're actually on a computer not in the room with me so i'm going to point it at you um you can see how the bevel of it it's such a, a girthy gun that it's not gonna lay as flat to my body, especially with the weapon light and the optic and all that other stuff. Leather formed holsters, I will also carry a, a 1911 in a leather formed holster. I bet that pissed a lot of you off and that makes me happy. It sits really close to my body. This doesn't sit as close. So if you're moving a lot, if you're out in public and you're not just sitting in your car driving, what will happen is if you're carrying outside the waistband on your hip with a baggy shirt, as you turn, the fabric will catch or print on the handle. And if you're standing fairly static, you know, just walking around doing whatever, it's not going to print much at all. I've carried full-size guns in places that you wouldn't expect in an outfit just like this. Never had one single problem. Nobody picked it up, you know, security guards, whoever else that you would think would be like, yo, are you carrying? Not a problem. So... The advantage of the small gun, even in the same outfit, is that it's probably not going to print, especially in a patterned shirt like this. The bigger guns, you might have a little more printing, but you've got so much more capability. And again, all I have to do is defeat the garment, and then my draw is exactly like it would be if I was running my normal stuff. So pros and cons to all of it. Um, it kind of is what it is. Uh, and again, this guy can hold all of these magazines. So... That's about as cool as it gets. I, I, I freaking love this thing. Um, and he gave me a new updated one. I just haven't switched it out yet. So I'll carry a handheld, the full-size gun with an optic and a light because it's 2024 and we have these capabilities now. And then another full-size magazine. So I'll have, you know, 36 to 40 rounds, two light sources, an optic, um, and then whatever else I've got going on. That's the basic first line. Um, that's the oh shit moment. I'm concealed carrying, my time has come type of thing. So what's all the other crap on the table? Let's talk about the next line, which would be medical, tourniquets and stuff. There are the folks that will take a tourniquet and unravel it then put it in their pants with the top portion sticking out under their belt line. And I'll just talk about that real quick. So this is a Cat 7, don't go buy some fake shit. There's no point in carrying medical equipment if it's not real. Um, they'll take this thing and they will put it in their pants like so at the belt line right here, this part sticking up and this is actually trailing down into their pants. So if they have to pull a tourniquet, they've already got it right there with them. 
Uh, that's super uncomfortable, um, but I have done it many, many times. It's better in something like blue jeans. Uh, these pants are from Paige, I think is the brand. My wife bought me like four sets of them because they make my ass look good, uh, which is honestly isn't that hard. But um, it's not as easy to conceal things down the pants leg, and it does print from the pocket a little better. They're great, like uh, four-way stretch, um, you know, plastic pants. They do well in the summer. I really like them for that. But the, the lighter the material, the stretchier the material, all that kind of stuff, things are going to print more. So things like, you know, good old Wranglers, Carhartt, uh, anything that has a pattern is going to print less, but in hot environments and whatever else, you're going to have problems. Also, cargo shorts or cargo pants are incredible um, for hiding things like medical equipment, putting a couple chest seals in one cargo pocket, a tourniquet in the other, and you're concealed carrying, but then you're the guy wearing cargo pants. And again, is that something that sets people off? I don't know. Uh, I just spent three months in Boston and I wore cry pants every single day and not a single person even looked at me. So it doesn't maybe really matter that much, um, but something to consider. What if we don't want to try to disperse a whole first line medical kit or an IFAC into our pants? Well, you can use some sort of storage system. This isn't the best example because it's ranger green um, and looks militaristic. Uh, I didn't bring the Patagonia that I would normally do this in. Patagonia makes a series called Black Hole, and it's made of uh, like a repurposed tire rubber that they turn into like a this sort of like PVC monster. But it can lay really flat or it can expand a lot. I use their bags for all kinds of stuff. Um, they'll tell you they're a liberal company, but they are suckling the teat of the military industrial complex anyway. They make great stuff. Just use what works. I don't care about the political opinions of a company. Um, this is from London Bridge, LBT, and it is holding just a shitload of stuff. Um, I got multiple tourniquets. Uh, I think I have four tourniquets in here. Other tourniquets can be carried elsewhere. Eight of the compression, I mean of the uh, hemostatic gauzes, two compression bandages, a SWAT tourniquet or a SWAT T, which is great for children, you know, dogs. It can be a good pressure bandage. Uh, two chest seals, and that's all in this little bitty low profile package. Now, if you're not afraid to be the guy wearing a fanny pack, or a bum bag, as they call it now, fanny's a bad word in some places, apparently, um, it's a great option. Uh, I still don't suggest you carry your pistol in it, unless maybe you're jogging or something, because now your pistol is not actually retained on your person. It's in something that can be snatched, grabbed, unbuckled, uh, etc. So this is a great way to carry medical equipment or supporting equipment. I just wouldn't use something that's like, Here's my Ranger Green medical kit walking around at the mall. Um, other good brands, unironically, Jansport makes a great um, one of these sort of systems. They have different sizes. They have like denim. They have bright colors. They have stuff that doesn't look like you, you're maybe a tourist or a photographer or whatever, and you have some you know stuff in one of these. I've also used a company called Wisport or Wisport out of Poland, and their stuff is sold through a site in, U in the UK called uh, Military First and it comes in all kind of patterns. And the only reason I even bought it is because it was Multicam Tropic, but it turned out to be actually a really cool purchase. It's called the uh, Toke Pack, and it's about half this size, so you can't carry as much, but if I was going to get something to carry around, you know, concealed carrying medical equipment, you could put one tourniquet, about half of what's in here on it, have another tourniquet on your person somewhere and a pistol, and you've got a good bit of stuff and you're not sticking out like a sore thumb. So fanny packs are underestimated and somewhat demonized on the on the Instagrams, but they're a fantastic way to carry medical equipment at the very least and not just, you know, be obvious. The reason why you would want to carry medical equipment out in these types of places uh, for like a, a high threat area, like a mall is where active shooters happen a lot. Um, if you're a teacher or something like that and you can't carry a pistol but you want something like this, great, great option to have and you want to have more than just one thing. We all talk about IFAX being like, it's for me. But if there's some kid bleeding out, you're absolutely going to use it on them. And I can say that from experience. I've used my own IFAC on other people responding to shootings and stuff like that. Um, knock on wood, never had it used on me. I've only used it on other people. So bring more than just one of everything. Um, there was a, here in Hammond, Louisiana, there was a uh, bombing incident. The guy didn't actually have real bombs, but he made it look like he did. He drove his vehicle into the front doors of a target. His car is inside the target and was just throwing pipe bombs out. Um, 
it took almost three hours for the cops to get inside and get the building cleared because there's the outer perimeter, it has to be safe and all this other kind of stuff. So if bombs had actually gone off or anyone had been maybe cut by glass or run over by the car, you have two to three hours before the scene is safe for EMS to get inside. So you might think it's kind of lame to carry a fanny pack of metal, medical equipment to you know target of the mall until you have an arterial bleed and you're like, dang, I shouldn't have tried to be so cool on Instagram. So there's that. Now let's talk about other concealability. So we just talked about baggy shirts, pants. Um, what, what else can we do? Well, in cold weather, which is super cool, my, my favorite, we don't get a lot of that in Louisiana. Uh, this week has been awesome. You can always throw on a jacket. Um, jackets obviously are another layer of clothing that you have to defeat, but it allows you to hide a lot more stuff. Um, again, if you're wearing a M81 parka, people are going to be like, that's Ted Kaczynski's, you know, nephew. But if you wear a normal jacket made by, you know, regular people clothing brands, um, I think I just got this one for Christmas and it's my new favorite, Abercrombie and & Fitch. And uh, it helps me conceal. So I can throw on a full size and even have my shirt over it just like I would be carrying it open, have a jacket over it, now I still only have to defeat one layer of the garment. So something to consider layering if you're in a cold environment can really help. That can also help with other stuff. So let's just up the ante a little bit and see what if we had to carry other stuff? What if we think maybe something worse might pop off? There's this whole subculture of like truck gun, you know, bag gun people um, and I'm not hating too hard on that, but there needs to be, a, in, in my opinion, a clear indication of a need for, in order for me to bring all that with me where I'm going. I don't bring plates and a rifle to the mall. Now, one, because that's probably going to get stolen out of my car in Louisiana. It's just how it is. But if I had that stuff and something pops off at the mall and I run out to my car and I make it, I escape. I wasn't near the shooting. I just heard it and I get out with my family. Am I going to put a bunch of equipment back on or on and then go back into the event? Probably not. And there's two reasons why. One, ultimately I'm responsible for me and my family at that moment. So if I've gotten them to safety, I'm not about to abandon them. Two, how am I going to identify myself as not being the shooter? How many times have cops shown up and there's a good guy with his gun out with no other sort of uh, indicator of friend or foe or IFF? to show that he is a good guy. Now, people will say, well, put on a civilian patch. Well, the guy doing the shooting is also a civilian, so that doesn't mean dick. That's a political statement. The civilian patch is basically meaningless, and I think you're a dork if you wear that, thinking it's gonna make you somehow not get shot by the cops. Um, reality is where we're at right now. Civilian patch is not gonna get red. They're gonna say, that guy's in a plate carrier with a rifle, we're gonna smoke him. And that's a reasonable response by them, giving the totality of the circumstances. So I'm not talking about having a kit in your trunk so you can put it on and go back in and be the hero. I'm talking about, okay, I got to get from point A to point B, and I think there's a higher likelihood of something legitimately popping off. And whatever my reason is, I think that I have to go. I'm going to have this stuff with me. That might be, um, you lived in Minneapolis in 2020, and um, one political party's leanings caused, you know, uh, what was it like $12 billion in property damage? Um, lots of, lots of Jordans went missing. So maybe if I have to go from point A to point B and I have some of this stuff with me, I have a higher chance of survival. If I get jumped, carjacked, um, maybe my buddy's business is being burnt to the ground and he asks for help. And if I choose to put my life on the line and go out there and help him, cause the cops weren't worth a fuck in Minneapolis when that was happening. They were actually told to stand down and let property be burnt. If I have to take things into my own hands as an American with the God-given rights that are ratified by our Constitution, maybe I'll put this stuff on. That's the situations that I'm talking about. Could also be that you're a cop and you have a personal protection detail. Could be that you're a cop and you're doing low visibility surveillance. So I'm trying to not be seen by somebody, but if they see me, it's going to be a fight. Maybe I'll have some other stuff with me. Um, could also be that you're a private security guy and you're not trying to stick out like a sore thumb, but the person that you're protecting is the kind of person that armed people would try to come and take. So now that we've got all of our fantasy land scenario, you know, um, disclaimers out the way, let's talk about the, wha the what and quit talking about the why. Um, obviously, pistols are not ideal when it comes to being in a gunfight, but it is our first line. Rifles are a lot more ideal. 
how do I store a rifle in my vehicle without it being obvious theft item? I'm a huge fan of the jacket method. You put it in between the seats and you put a jacket over it. Crazy how well that works. Done it for years. Um, anytime I had to do any sort of low vis, whatever, you just cover it with something. If it's a trunk gun or a truck gun, having it in a bag or a case that doesn't say like Oakley gun bag on it would be huge, I think. You know, like the Vertex bags. Um, not a big fan of that. I would much rather like a violin case or a Patagonia bag or whatever else. Again, where you put it in the car is going to be based on what you think the actual likelihood is of getting it. Um, if I'm going to have it with me in the front seat, it's because I need it that fast. Oh, it's popping off. There's my gun. The same thing goes for your plates. If you think that you're going to have time during the escalation of the event to put plates on, maybe you don't have them in the front seat. Um, or maybe you don't have them on your person. They could be in the trunk with your rifle and it's kind of like get to the trunk, upgrade, and then move. Either way, the way in which we put this stuff on or carry this stuff needs to not set people off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Speaking of being set off, you guys have me on a tangent here. How am I going to conceal these plates? If I throw the plates on over my uh, snazzy J. Crew shirt, Everyone's going to see the plates first. I can put them under my shirt, and if I'm going to do that, I need a carrier if it doesn't have a bunch of uh, accoutrement on it that's going to poke out of my shirt. Um, when I talk about that, what I mean is something slick like this. Now, just to just to nerd out for a second, it's Flecktarn because this company, uh, Terra B, is out of Germany, and you can't order stuff from Germany and not have it in a cool German pattern. Um, I actually just talked to these guys today on Instagram. They're talking about feedback for this carrier. I've had it for like five years. It's one of the first ones they ever made, and it's the first one, I believe, sent to America. Um, this is a scalable kit. It is not made to be only low-vis or only overt, and so because of that, it's not the best at either one of them, but I have found it to be one of the best concealable carriers I have used. I did wear this quite a bit on low-vis stuff as a SWAT dude back in the day, and I put lighter weight plates in it. Um, we had some really, really nice plates. So I could get level four protection from, you know, two and a half, three pound plates. Not everybody has that option. Work with what you got. But if you can select a higher rating plate with a uh, low profile design, especially if it's multi curve so it hugs your body better, this is a great option. Now, what makes this a good option is that there's not a whole lot of seams and things that are going to cause ridges and ripples. If you put this under a white t-shirt, everyone's going to see it. You're going to have a giant box on your chest. But something with thicker material, something that has other stuff on it, you know, the ridges of the buttons, the pocket, the pattern, that's going to disrupt a little bit of this. But this carrier doesn't have a lot of seams. Like you can see, the ridge here is only going to be formed as it bends around the plate. There's no pocket that's sewn in. It's not a plate bag sewn into a strap. It is one laser cut piece of laminate. And then um, they have a really low profile hook and loop on the shoulder, uh, which is really nice. Now it could be even more low profile, which is one of the things we were talking about. On the sides, um, I could go get just a straight elastic band for it. They didn't have one at the time, but I haven't found, again, uh, you have a little bit of muscle mass in the upper part of your body. Your shirt's gonna hang over this. And this does give me the ability to put some mags, some tourniquets, uh, a radio and things like that under it. Um, on the back, again, very featureless, which is a good thing for concealment. If you can find a carrier that doesn't have um, Velcro ID panels on it, not a bad thing, because the whole point of this is it's gonna be under a shirt. I don't need to put a police patch on something and then cover it with a shirt and have those corners sticking out, or my civilian patch, or whatever, um, LARPerator. Um, but the only one I know of that's like that, Condor, uh, which is a dirty word, makes one, and then Rothko makes a concealable plate carrier. I think it's like 65 bucks and it's just a featureless bag. Um, the stitching isn't super high quality. I bought one to try it and I put some heavier plates in it just to see what would happen. And I wasn't a fan of it. It kind of looked like it was stretching a little bit, but something really lightweight would do good. So just do your research, look for something that's not gonna print and then for the love of God, try it out. And don't just think that it's gonna work the first time you put it on. So without further ado, what kind of armor should we be using um, I, for demo, I have my Angel Armor set. Angel Armor is a fantastic company, but they don't sell to civilians. So the company came to fruition because a guy's brother-in-law got shot in the line of duty and the plates didn't do what they were supposed to do or he felt that they didn't do enough. Um, and so he started a company making um, polyceramic plates. I think this weighs two pounds, 
pound and a half, something like that. It's like not even holding anything. It weighs less than my staccato and uh, it'll stop 308s. So pretty wild. And now they have even better armor that I just haven't purchased. Um, it's multi-curve, which is cool. So it's gonna fit to my body better. And when I don't have this mic on, we'll show you the fit with the shirt over it. But the reason I wanted to use these is because I actually have a plate that's really bad for concealment and it's also made by them and I'll show you why. So note the, the thickness of it, um, the subtle off-white coloring, you know. My God, it even has a watermark. What about this? Now I get the comment on Instagram a lot. They're like, Jared, you're, you're so thick. Why don't you have bigger plates? Well, it's because it ruins your ability to move. Um, and when I ordered these, I actually didn't order this plate and they sent me the wrong one. And I was so intrigued by having like a manila folder shaped armor plate that I kept it. Um, again, it's still multi-curve, so it's going to hug my body, but think about the movement of your joints, especially your shoulders and all that kind of stuff, sitting back in a car, or throwing a ruck on over this or whatever else. This is like murdering your shoulder blade mobility. It's got big hot spots on it. Now, they designed all of this to fit over their proprietary soft armor, so it kind of helps disperse that hot point. But um, for the purposes of this demo, what you're going to see is when you put something under your shirt that isn't person-shaped, it pokes out real bad. If I had two of these, one on the front and one on the back, the shoulder blade is going to be able to rotate around this space and not a problem. But look at the profile of them together. Now this seems super common sense, but some of y'all are pretty dumb, so don't wear something square because you aren't square um, if you're trying to hide it. All right. Now, again, I'm gonna put all this together in a minute. What if we needed to carry more than just that stuff or we think we might have to throw something else on? Well, there's all kinds of options. Think about um, like the Velocity magnetic system. So they have a concealed carrier, a whole suite of stuff for it. It's really, really cool. And then they have a magnetic system. It's basically like a micro rig, kind of like what Haley and some others uh, have produced or like the Blue Force gears, like 10 speed elastic pouches. You can set up this suite and it's got neodymium uh, earth magnets on it. You can just slap it onto the carrier and it click, click into place. So you'll be wearing a regular shirt, kit under it, something pops off and you grab all your extra crap and snap it onto your plate and it's basically floating on the outside of your clothing. It's really, really neat. But if you're not that guy, uh, you don't have that money, you're not in law enforcement or, or whatever other limitations you may have, um, you can just opt for a straight up chest rig. Now, I didn't bring my micro fight, you know, there's Spiritus micro fight, there's the dope pouch or the dope flap or whatever the skateboarders at Faro called it. Um, there's the velocity rigs, there's the Haley, uh, what does he call his? You guys know, put it in the comments. Um, but this is the Onward Research chest rig, or the, the recce rig, so I can reconnaissance the Chick-fil-A um, recon reconnoiter. Reconnaissance, since however you say it, um, you can do a lot with this. Okay, um, I have upgraded it with some things. I have a Faro um, admin pouch, or their half pouch, or whatever they call it. None of their stuff makes sense, and then they'll randomly just be like general purpose pouch. So I'm trying to talk to them about that. But I've upgraded some stuff, so I have you know a place to put my Sour Patch Kids, water, another medical kit, um, more Sour Patch Kids. A radio, tourniquets, six mags, and if I can grab this and throw it on all my other um, covert or low vis stuff, this is when it's really all gone bad, but at least I have something lightweight. I can literally just throw it over my head and when I get time, clip it in place. And now I've got pretty much everything I would have on like a rifleman or a direct action type of kit. So this is all scalable. It can all be worn separately or in conjunction. And of course, the rifle, obviously, um, there are people that would say like a sub gun is really good for this stuff. I have brought my sub gun on these kind of operations and I just didn't feel as confident in it. Um, I already have a big nine millimeter on my hip. I don't want one with like two extra inches of barrel. Um, if I want a rifle, I'm gonna get a rifle. And especially because the capabilities of a modern 5.56 and the length that they are, just they surpass sub guns. So as cool as it is to put all this shit on, and like admin does the HK slap, I think I would probably rather, if it's really gonna pop off, have my 5.56. So I run an LWRC piston 
Oh, it's a 10.5. I have an ADM lower on it or American Defense Manufacturing because they have such nice ambidextrous controls. They actually looked at the way the human hand is made. Um, or I like to jokingly say ADM and God got together and made the rifle. So everything is where your fingers actually use it. Um, when you go to reload a magazine, you have a bolt release right there. So a lot of, lot of really cool features on it. Um, as much as I love LWRC, their lower is not as well made. So I put that together. Um, whatever your capabilities are, obviously if you don't need a laser and a suppressor or you don't have one and can't afford it or whatever, just a good white light, a good reliable optic that's not gonna need to be turned on and prepped. Um, I'm using the Promethean LP1 from Lead and Steel. I've had this on here for uh, 10 months and it's been on the entire time. Um, on the setting that I found that was homogenized for use under daylight, low light, white light, and NVGs. So all, literally all I have to do is pick the gun up. It's supposed to have 30,000 hours of battery life. Uh, I think we're close to surpassing that. I'm not a mathematician, so you guys tell me what, um, you know, 10 or 11 months is in hours. But um, something like that. Aim point is usually the go-to for a lot of people's like truck guns or whatever because they can just pick it up and it has like four years of battery life. So... Um, a lot, of, a lot of stuff goes into that, but just pick something reliable. Um, you know, don't go get the kel fold-out carbine or whatever, unless you're the guy that has to have it in his, you know, backpack uh, or whatever other trend you're following. Make it make sense, guys. That's all there is to this stuff. So pick what you need based on your environment, based on what you think the mission is, and then layer it. Uh, if you don't need plates in a rifle, don't bring it. Just bring your medical, bring your pistol. If you think that's really that necessary, but you don't have to wear it around, put it in the trunk or put it somewhere hidden so that you'll make yourself a target. A lot of guys have their trucks broken into because they got like the moldy labia sticker and, um, you know, the America MAGA and everyone's like, yep, that's got a gun and then they go break into it. So, you know, be low vis in all aspects and then this stuff falls into place. Um, if you wear your fog hat and your FM shirt that says schizophrenic and strapped on it to the mall, people will probably know that you have a gun. Um, so, gray man doesn't really exist, but we can make it a thing if we need it to be. Um, I think that pretty much covers all of it. So, now we're going to put it all together for you. So, now I've got some of this stuff on. I've got the plates on, which you probably can see a little bit of a shelf up here. I know the mic is making the shirt pucker a little bit, but that's below the line of the shelf, which is actually right there. Um, if the wind were to blow or anything like that really straight on, you would see the shelf here at the bottom of the plate, which is often a giveaway for people that are wearing hard plates under dress clothes. Um, for the pistol, I have the shirt over it just to show. If I'm just standing here, not a whole lot's happening, but as soon as I start moving, you can see how it drags across the outer points of the full size. So that's one of the advantages of carrying something inside the waistband and smaller um, is obviously the shirt doesn't have as, there's not as much distance off your body. Now wearing a jacket, I could probably get away with it like this. It's a heavier jacket. It's not blowing around in the breeze. The, there's a good two inches of clearance at the bottom where the holster isn't showing. Uh, and again, this is the kind of thing where if I'm trying to be concealed from somebody who knows exactly what to look for and I'm like walking around in the public like this, they're like, that guy's shaped like a penguin what the fuck's going on like he's too wide something's happening but if i'm sitting still in place if i'm in a vehicle and this is just in case something goes really bad and i have to become obvious it's a really good way to carry stuff and we didn't talk about soft armor and that's because i don't have a soft armor concealed carrier it's all just overt stuff layered in for like direct action or patrol work so soft armor concealers obviously they're not level four like they're not gonna stop rifle rounds like this but if you're mainly, especially in the continental U.S. as a cop or whatever else, uh, a security guy, you're mainly dealing with pistol caliber threats, you can get level 3A soft armor that is cut just immaculately for concealment. Cry makes a really good one. Velocity makes good ones. Um, there's other companies that make good stuff. So that would be something to consider if you don't want to look a little bit less, you know, bird-chested with this stuff. Um, make it make sense for your threat and your environment. This is just what I have to demo with. And is something I have actually worn to do this, and it was never a problem. Um, also wore the Angel Armor complete low-vis vest, but it adds a lot of girth around the sides. It puffs up your shoulders a little more. So I would often wear that with a hoodie over it, because a hoodie really hides a lot of this stuff. Now, we're going to look at what this looks like on the back. Remember, I'm wearing these square plates as a demo of, like, hey, don't do that. 
Um, the plates that I was putting in this before was different issued plates, same cut as the front, also had on the back. So you can see, especially when I move my arms, how it prints that square smoothness on the back is not really what you want to have because if you're not sitting in a vehicle and someone can see you from the back or from an oblique angle they're like that dude has a corner poking out of his shoulder what is that even if there's somebody that is not trained to look for this stuff that's a really obvious indicator and of course like i said if it really pops off or if you're that guy that keeps the rifle tucked in the side um, you can scale up really easily with this if i had the magnetic placard system i just grab it slap it on my shirt and i'm good if i have a chest rig i can just throw it over my head when i get time clip it around my back if medical pops off i will often have this on my headrest so i just throw it over the headrest in the seat next to me it looks like a camera bag or whatever else especially if i'm using the patagonia one and all of these things are accessible but not visible really easily Something I didn't talk about and I actually meant to earlier with the rifle, I'm gonna try to not make the audio spike again, um, short mags. So a lot of people will ask me when they see it, like, hey, why are you using a short mag? Um, it's just because it sits easier in the pocket next to my seat. This magazine doesn't stick as far down into that void, so I can uh, have it a little bit easier concealed. Now, if you're not willing to sacrifice those extra eight to 10 rounds, cool, use a big one and maybe just be aware that your rifle is going to poke out of the seat a little more. But that's one of those things that's not of a lot of consequence. It's just something to talk about. Short mags can be a great way to set up your truck gun or, you know, use my pistol to fight to my rifle gun or whatever else. Um, that's pretty much it on putting it all together other than just, you know, throwing the chest rig over my jacket and I'm not going to give you guys that luxury. So uh, thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning about this kind of stuff, uh, there's a lot more material out there. There's, you know, all the gray man blogs and all that stuff. Honestly, in my opinion, the best way to get good at concealed carrying and low vis things is to just do it. That is not an encouragement to wear plates to the mall. I am simply saying that experience is the best teacher as far as hiding stuff. You can also get friends, family members, whatever, video something that you've set up and say, hey, like, what do you notice that's odd about this? And then if they say, you're carrying on your right hip, now you know what you need to improve. Um, there are also courses you can take on pre-combat indicators. Uh, a great book to read about this kind of concepts is Left of Bang. It's tertiary to all this. It's not about how to conceal carry or reload is, but it's about the psychology of predicting bad events, which as we said at the beginning of the video, other than being a fit guy, understanding that just getting away or avoiding the contact is probably the best option. And if you're going to be forced to be in a situation, seeing it coming and having your um, processor or your OODA loop sped up prior to the bang happening, think about it on a timeline. We're left of bang. We see it coming. and Here's bang. We can approach it more prepared. So that's a lot of topics. We talked about a lot of stuff. I gave a lot of opinions just based on you know my limited experience. Um, if you like full sizes and you want to carry them, do it. If you like compacts and you want to carry them, do it. You should probably have flashlights. You should um, probably figure out what's comfortable and best for you given your use case. If you want a hip carry, you want an appendix carry, you want a prison wallet carry, you just make it make sense. A couple things we didn't talk about in this video, um, edged weapons. I am not, uh, as much as I love a good edge, I am not the edged weapon guy. So there are people that are all about knives, there are people that are all about the little pokey stabby G10s and plastic stuff and it'll fit through the metal detector, brother. All that stuff's cool, um, it's just not my area. Um, there are guys like you know Shivworks and stuff like that that'll teach whole classes on reacting to situations, getting out of situations using edged weapons. So that's a um, totally different topic, but it fits into this. So don't look at this as the Bible on this topic. Don't look at it as the end all be all. It's just a short video on some of my thoughts on the problems in concealment, the problems in low vis, some of the solutions that I have used operationally and then just, you know, walking around at the store with my wife being my own personal protection detail as uh, T-Max says. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to come to classes, we have open enrollment for American citizens. We teach CQB, rifle, pistol, night vision, red dot, long range, um, kind of run the gamut of all the things that it would take you to be a truly prepared modern American rifleman. So if you're interested in that stuff, orientraininggroup.com. 
Uh, if you don't think you can make it to a class, check out our Patreon. We talk about a lot of this type of stuff. I have an article I wrote on this that I just posted a few weeks ago. Uh, we do a lot of tactics, breakdowns, and things like that on there. It's five bucks a month, 60 bucks a year, and you get direct access to all these kinds of things. Um, that's pretty much it for me, guys. So like I end a lot of our videos, repent, turn to Christ, drink your water, get your sun, eat red meat, work out, no touch PP. Thanks for watching.